So then you do think patients should know as much as possible about the doctors that treat them? Yes, of course. Where he was trained, who trained him? Personal habits. No, I don't see why. Unless it impacts upon his ability as a physician. Well, let's talk about that. Have you had a drink today? Objection, Your Honor. Relevancy. I'll allow it. Yes. More than one? Yes. How many more than one? I'm not sure. Do you recall, was it between two and five drinks? I don't recall. Doctor, is it not a fact that you had six bourbons on the rocks at Chance's Pub not 45 minutes ago? Objection, Your Honor. I'll allow it. Let's move on, Mr. Stone. Would you step into the well, Dr. Oster? Objection, Your Honor. There's no need for Dr. Oster to stand. Sidebar, please, Your Honor. What's going on, Mr. Stone? Does Dr. Oster look drunk to you, Your Honor? What the hell is that supposed to mean? I must be allowed to show Dr. Oster is in the courtroom and he's drunk. Your Honor, I strenuously object to this. Overruled. Proceed, Mr. Stone. Step into the well, doctor. This is the New York City Police Department manual. I'm going to administer a standard test to determine whether a person is operating a motor vehicle under the influence. This is an outrage. Do as Mr. Stone instructs you, doctor. Raise your arm to the level of your shoulder, close your eyes, and point your nose with your index finger. Who owns Shaw's jewelry? Ezra. My father gave him the business. And how much did Ezra pay you? $60,000 a year. And how much money did you earn last year from Mr. Tastian's money laundering operation? About $140,000. And your brother wanted to take that away, huh? Must have made you mad. Mad enough to kill? Objection. Withdrawn. One witness. That's all I have. The victim's brother. If you fully believe Isaac Shore is telling the truth, convict. Why not? Isaac Shore lied to the grand jury. He lied to his family. He lied to the police, to the prosecutors. At one point, he actually confessed to having killed him. Of course, he could be telling the truth now. Sure, it's possible Joseph Tazjin murdered Ezra Shore. You may even think it's probable. But in that case, there's only one thing you can do. Your duty is clear. You must return a verdict of not guilty. Because in this system, probably is not good enough. You must be convinced beyond a reasonable doubt. Isaac Shore has told so many lies that it would be unreasonable not to doubt his testimony. Yes, Isaac Shore should have come forward immediately and said that Joseph Tajan savagely murdered my brother. And he should have stood up in the grand jury and said those three boys are innocent. Joseph Tajan's the killer. But he didn't do that. Was he immoral? Was he evil? Isaac Shore was terrified. He'd eyewitnessed an unspeakable horror, the brutalization of a family member. And it was his greatest fear to ever see that happen again. So why would Isaac Shore concoct a story like this? 
The fears of Isaac Shore, they don't make his testimony any the less credible, and they certainly don't make Joseph Tadgen any the less guilty. Joseph Tadgen is guilty of murder in the second degree. On the sole count of the indictment, murder in the second degree, how does the jury find? We find the defendant not guilty. My father is convinced. Everyone is motivated by fear. Mine thinks it's greed. What do you think? That Isaac fell victim to both. been trained to control my emotions under all circumstances they never break free no they don't you never lose control you want to know how I conduct myself take a look at my service record when you do what I do losing control is not an option you lose control you die people 17 this is a recording of U.S. Navy training flight number 001954, the carrier Minnesota. Do you recall that flight, Miss Blair? Your Honor, I renew my objection to the so-called evidence. So noted. Go on, Mr. McCoy. You know what's on this tape? I'll refresh your memory. The voices you'll hear belong to Lieutenant William Ottenberg, landing signal officer on the carrier Minnesota, and to Lieutenant Blair in an F-14 on approach for a night landing on the carrier off of San Diego. Blair, you're next in line. Negative, I'm not. Check your lineup, Blair. Watch the meatball. I can't do this. I can barely see the deck light. Keep your scan moving. Right for lineup. I can't do it. Wave off. Wave off. Wave off. Oh my God. Raise your gear. Raise your gear. Oh God. Burner. 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 54, what's your status? 54. I can't do this, Ottenberg. Hand me off to Miramar. Bring her back around. You can do it. No, hand me off. Let me make a ground landing. This is a training flight, Lieutenant. You already know how to make ground landings. Well, because I had good trainers, not morons like you. Cool it, Lieutenant. Screw me over. I'm going to rip you a new one. Did you rip him a new one? I filed a report. Was this your first attempt at a night landing? No, it was my third. How many years have you been in the Navy, Ms. Blair? Five and a half. This recording was made six months ago. At what point did you learn the steely control of your emotions you alluded to earlier? You're the court-appointed psychiatrist who's done extensive work at the Avenal Correctional Facility in New Jersey. Is that correct? Yes. Could you describe Avenal for us, please? It's a maximum security prison for violent sex offenders. And during Mr. Turbitt's 12-year incarceration at Avenal, did he ever attack a fellow inmate sexually? Not to my knowledge. Not a guard, a psychiatrist. No. no. So because of this one crime for which my client paid his debt to society... And which, to an extreme degree of likelihood, he will repeat. In your opinion, 
In fact, Doctor, isn't this whole legislation nothing but a cheesy end run around a cherished legal concept of double jeopardy? Not in my opinion. Oh, come on, Dr. Greenblatt. He was sane enough when he was convicted and served his sentence. Isn't it pretty damn convenient that he'd be declared insane now so you can put him away again? And that's just plain unconstitutional. Miss Kreutzer, we take your point. Thank you, Judge. In fact, I need time to review the proposed statute. We'll reconvene tomorrow. Until then, Mr. Turbot, you're a free man. You did fine. In Ryan's neighborhood alone, there were nine sex offenders. You don't have children. You don't understand. You don't have to have children to understand double jeopardy. You want guys like Turbot playing on your swing set? You want to lock them all up? Yeah, I do. Where does it stop? Please show us how you held the Baran. I told you, I don't remember. I, I was high on drugs. I was out of my mind with fear and grief. I, I, I just been told I killed someone I love. Did Mr. Gordon warn you I'd put the murder weapon in your hand? It's an old prosecutor's trick. Objection, relevance. I'll allow it. Yes during one of your prep sessions for today's testimony, maybe while you were watching a videotape of yourself practicing your story? No, I, I... Yes. Was that when you rehearsed maintaining eye contact with the jury? Mr. Gordon told you to do that, didn't he? Yes. Did he also tell you to suddenly remember this alleged argument between your former wife and Dr. Duval? No, I always remembered that. You just never thought it was important? Well, I didn't know everything then. But now, Mr. Gordon has filled you in. He told me to tell the truth. Then let's try this again. Please show us how you butchered your wife. Take it. One hand or two hands, Mr. Newman? Two hands. Show us. <sighs> How many times did you strike Heidi's neck? I'm not sure. The medical examiner testified there were two blows to the neck. Did you do that? Yes, that's possible. You were very angry, weren't you? No, what do you mean? The medical examiner testified you struck her with such force, you took her head clean off. I don't know. The same with her hands and her feet. You were in a rage. No. And you had plenty to be angry at her for, didn't you? She was keeping you from making a movie. It was just a movie. Just the movie that you had been trying to get made for five years. It wasn't that important. Eight years ago, you won an honorable mention from the New York Film Festival, isn't that right? Yes, for my film, Crooked Street. The critic said, your daring foray into a new American neorealism marked you as one of the most promising artists of the American cinema. That's right. What's your current movie about, Mr. Newman? Talking Bears? Yes. A daring neorealist foray into Jellystone Park? Does that fulfill your promise as an artist? No. Heidi Ellison was keeping you from fulfilling that promise, wasn't she? Not just her. Do you know what kind of crap they wanted me to make? But especially her. She could have let you make Madame Bovary, couldn't she? Yes. But she didn't, did she? She gave me a choice. The bears or a picture about a dog who's granted three wishes. I couldn't believe you it. You couldn't believe what, Mr. Newman? I had an actress, a bankable actress who was attached to Bovary. But Heidi gives her $12 million to do an asteroid movie instead. Because our marriage didn't work out. That vindictive bitch, I could have made something! <laughs> 